Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst, and tonight we're going to be talking about the New York Times' opinion about how the Democratic debate just went down, the current state of the Democratic Party, and how they think things are going to end up. If you like what I do, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter and Minds. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's get right into this one. One of the purported moderators of the debate, CBS News' Nora O'Donnell, opened things up by asking Mr. Sanders why, in the midst of such a strong economy, Americans should look to a democratic socialist to do even better. An excellent question. To which Bernie said, the senator, or the economy working only for billionaires, and how he would create a system that worked for everyone. Okay, Bernie. All right, settle down. So, Mr. Bloomberg took the approach most designed to irritate. He invoked the most recent reports, at least they're admitting it, most designed to irritate. Finally, it only took you three years, New York Times. At least you're admitting that this is nonsense. Trying to meddle, that Russia is trying to meddle in the election to aid Mr. Sanders, Vladimir Putin thinks that Donald Trump should be President Bloomberg charged. And that's why Russia is helping you get elected so you may lose to him. Bam! <laughs> Good job, Bloomberg. Good job. Big brain stuff. Big brain stuff from, from the Bloomberg. Sounding his theme, the need to restore sanity and civility to politics, Pete Buttigieg appealed to voter fatigue, warning that a Sanders nomination would fuel the discord that Trump indeed was working to sow. I mean, look, if you think the last four years has been chaotic, divisive, toxic, exhausting, imagine spending the better part of 2020 with Bernie Sanders versus Donald Trump. Actually, good point. Good point. I totally agree. It's going to be nuts. It's going, the next few, it's only going to get crazier. It's only going to get crazier. So, aware that it was his make-or-break moment to convince South Carolina and Super Tuesday, voters that he, is, he still has the requisite fire in the belly, Joe Biden got pointed in personal. He noted that the debate was taking place not far from the site of the 2015 shooting at Mother Emanuel Church, then slammed Mr. Sanders for his past opposition to gun control, including five votes against the Brady Bill which required a waiting period and a background check for those looking to buy guns. I'm not saying he's responsible for the night. That's, I want to make it clear, Bernie didn't murder anyone. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you, Joe Biden. I really appreciate that. Before making a somewhat opaque argument, at least suggesting Sanders' voting history was partly to blame. Look, I mean... He's not totally responsible. Klobuchar got overlooked, or excuse me, New York Times endorsed Amy Klobuchar got overlooked in the opening melee. In some ways, a perfect reflection of her broader candidacy. <laughs> yeah. Except for us. We're the only ones who didn't overlook Amy Klobuchar. Well, everybody overlooked Amy Klobuchar because we knew she couldn't win. <laughs> but, yeah, good job, New York Times. Which, despite her consistently strong debate showings and a surprise third place finish in new hampshire she has struggled to gain, gain traction it's for tom star eh all right i agree with that thus the contours for the evening were set and in a reprise of her las vegas tour de force worn on bloomberg in a bloodletting worthy of uma thurman in kill bill that's true that's true it was nuts it was insanity, to be honest with you. I, I couldn't believe how much she was going after after Bloomberg, and, and Bloomberg misplayed. He misplayed the entire thing. It was bad. It was bad. If this had been a less crowded debate, it's possible the discussion would have been cleaner. In efforts to articulate concerns about Sanders' candidacy more cogent, Buttigieg, for instance, 
repeatedly argued that Mr. Sanders would not only lose the Democrats of the White House, but also cut their number in the Senate and cost them their hard-won majority. The time has come for us to stop acting like the presidency is the only office that matters. I don't think they are, but it is by far the most important. All right, then they talk about Bernie's Medicare for All plan. He doesn't know. Nobody knows how, to, how they're going to pay for it. No one knows. That's the thing. And look, Sanders supporters would say that doesn't matter. It's still worth it because Bernie said something like 67,000 people. This would save that many 67,000 lives. I don't know if that's true. I think that's, I think that's an exaggeration. But at the same time, um, you know, what is, how, let's say it is true. How much is that worth? The people would say, look, it doesn't matter. And that's a fair point. It doesn't matter how much we pay if we're saving 50,000 people a year. Hard to argue with that. But there's little point in sighing over the current size of the field, just as there is no point in fantasizing about which superstar would be tearing up the race if only things were different. Who are they talking about? How, what superstar is in the Democratic Party? Uh, there's AOC from New York. Maybe they mean her. She's too young. I don't mean that critically. She's constitutionally too young. But there's also Clinton. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, that's too crazy. The time for what ifing and daydreaming is over. The time for speeches is over. <laughs> Good job. New York Times, voters need to get serious about their real-life choices. South Carolinians go to the polls on Saturday, three years, three days later, excuse me. Super Tuesday hits, which for the first time includes political behemoth, California. By this time next week, more than a third of the delegates needed for the nomination will have been distributed. And the electorate will have largely forgotten about the Democrats' ugly rumble in Charleston. That's true, but they won't forget the results in Charleston, which have been too too early to tell, definitely, what the outcome will be. But it, the debate has certainly affected it. We will see to what extent. I believe the current the, the current consensus is that it is now by a slim margin, most likely that no one will win outright. And, and it'll be a contested convention. Uh, and with Bernie winning outright being the second most likely, I don't believe that to be the case, personally. I think, I still think Bernie will win outright. We'll see. We will see. Not going to predict anything this time. Overall, fine piece. It was a good piece by by the New York Times. Um, I I don't know. I don't. Some of these Democrats need to. If the if the Democrats wanted to win, if the moderate ones rather wanted to win, they're gonna they'd have to get behind one candidate. But that would also increase Bernie's chance of winning, because if you only have one candidate. I mean, some of these progressives are voting for Warren. And I'm sure there's others that would vote for Bernie over a Biden. And so, you know, it, they're in a tough spot, the moderates. But um, it's been a beast of their own making, if you ask me. Been a beast of their own making. If you like what I do, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter and Minds. Have a good evening. Thank you all for listening. This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Minds, and subscribe to me on YouTube. And be sure to hit that bell notification. I'll be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing enjoyment. Have a good one.